All right, thank you very much. Uh, I am honored to be able to introduce to you uh, an outstanding uh, uh, scholar. Actually, uh, he came to us and he's working with us at Temple. He's writing articles and books. Very, very brilliant uh, brother, uh, Dr. Uh, Ishaka Jara, who's assistant professor in the English department at the University of uh, Letters and Science, uh, Human uh, Sciences, and Bamako. Bamako is the um, uh, capital of Mali. Uh, he is a uh, Fulbright visiting professor at Temple University, and I am, I, we have found him to be just a really wonderful person, uh, uh, collegial, uh, sharing his information with us. And this, this uh, time we are pleased that he's going to be sharing with us on the whole question of the uh, Kurakan Fuga. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hotep. Hotep. Um, it's such an honor to be here with so many important persons today. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank um, Professor Molefi's mother, as we used to do in Africa, and then tell her that she did a good job. And then we are proud of Professor Molefi. We are really proud of him. Um, Yesterday, Professor Malefi discussed about the rash, uh, radical uh, origins of Black History Month and how it confronts cultural hegemony. And then um, I was happy to learn that in February 1946, the Black historian and scholar Carter G. Woodson established Negro History, um, History Week, and then. That was a great information. I learned a lot. Thank you for your contribution, Professor. I am very grateful to Dr. Nadov for her support. And today, we're going to tackle um, the foundation of West African uh, governance system. Um, I got two um, slides. Uh, the original slide, we put it here. It refused to come out. And then uh, we, we're going to work and then as I can talk to you, it's very good. My, uh, we, my first language was my mother tongue and French, and then English was the second one. And then uh, you, most of the people are the native uh, speakers, and that's fabulous. And then um, the outline of my uh, presentation is the introduction, uh, presentation of West African governance system, strength and weaknesses, insights, and lesson from the past, pathways to good governance uh, from Wangari Matai's metaphor, and then the conclusion. And then in the introduction, uh, I said that since the independences, West African countries have been facing multidimensional challenges linked to the governance system, even though it was in Africa that the first organized country arose called Kemet right. and the land of the blacks right. and then the, the Greek uh, call it Egypt mm -hmm. uh, which became the first nation of a central government and that is from Ashanti's book mm -hmm. and then um, of 19, uh, 2019. That governance was based on math and the cosmic principle of uh, harmony which disrupts chaos and uh, restores peace and justice. Math is believed to be the fundamental reality without uh, it, there is no understanding, no harmony, and no possible restoration of balance. And then Professor Asante, the father of Afrocentricity, will agree with us because since 1990, he talked about that. And then um, we said, however, after um, this uh, Egypt, um, we uh, came through slavery and colonization, um, which have obliterated the Kemetic heritage, and West African countries inherited an alien governance system that do not suit their needs and aspiration. And that means 
we are having something new with us today. To address its governance, to address the governance predic uh, predicament, uh, Ali uh, Mazri uh, in 1986 uh, argues that Africa has to look inward towards ancestry and undertake a systematic investigation into the cultural pre uh, pre uh, precondition of the success of each project and each piece of legislation of each system of government. Mm -hmm. And then um, this fourth piece subscribe within the same contention as we believe that West Africa can learn lesson from the past and address the governance challenge. And then if we inspire, if we get inspiration from the past, we for sure will be able um, to go further instead of copy and paste. Therefore, this study aims at taking stocks of contemporary West African governance systems, shedding light on its strengths and weaknesses, challenges and predicaments, and how that can be addressed by drawing some lesson from the past. And this is still a work in progress. Some question will guide this presentation. And then what are the most uh, pressing challenge of West African uh, governance today? And what type of leadership West African countries need to achieve? And also, uh, which way toward our African renaissance and system? And then by going through this, I decided um, to talk about now the strength um, of West African governance system. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you can see that it doesn't matter. I, I can also go with this one. Uh, it's not a problem. The, pres uh, the present day West African governance system, mm -hmm. weak and, uh, weaknesses and strength. Mm -hmm. The first part that I talk about the strength, I said that more and more African countries become relatively uh, democratic within the multi party framework. Um, around the 1990s, the African uh, countries, most of them accepted uh, the multi-parties. And then that was a kind of strength because uh, uh, people were able to do, um, uh, to speak most of the time. Mm -hmm. And then also the African political governance has improved considerably in countries where self-reliance is required. Uh, like in Botswana today, most of the people uh, are not aware of that, that the Bos Botswana is doing very good work. They are trusting themselves, they are transforming their raw material, and they are becoming really, really independent country. And they, with uh, the diamond uh, industries, they are dealing with a true exchange. It's like a 50-50 that is unbelievable in Africa. Because in my country, for instance, in Mali, the goal is like 15% for years and years for the country. And then imagine having 50-50, that is uh, fabulous. And then um, I can, uh, we can talk now about the weaknesses. And then uh, for the weaknesses, well, we will have a lot of weaknesses about that. The indicators of West, uh, of political governance is measure of the political instability, uh, the PI. And then the, the, this political instability is a big problem and it's bring a lot of coup d'etat and a lot of civil war in Africa. And then Masri has divided African country into two categories, saying that the coup prone and the coup free from uh, Africa imposed by Western. Mm -hmm. And then also we have the democracy is not African. It is European. Africans do not understand it and uh, we cannot function and direct it uh, because we had our own way, our own type of democracy passed in Africa. Uh, in the time where we had the Sunjata, as mm -hmm. the professor was saying in the Mali Empire, uh, they gathered people. That was uh, in uh, Mandi, uh, in Mali Empire, the Mandingo Empire. That was in 1235. Mm -hmm. And then they it gathered, and 12 kings agreed to appoint 
Sunjata as their leader. And then it was a multi uh, cultural uh, uh, country nation. Uh, and then Sunjata appointed each of them also like governors. And that happened after uh, the uh, Battle of Kirina. Uh, that's uh, between mm -hmm. Sunjata and uh, Sumanguru uh, mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, this, uh, thanks to Sunjata, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the new uh, Mali Empire, uh, in the new Mali Empire, he uh, brought the Kurukan Fuka Charter with 44 articles. Mm -hmm. And those articles, thanks to that, they, it's where those were agreement. And then he tried to organize the society with them. And that helped him uh, to be a real um, a king. The Article 7 of the Kurukan Fuka Charter um, uh, brought the Sanankuya, that is the brotherhood, uh, the joking relationship. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, there were different, for instance, the grandfather mm -hmm. and the grandson, those are joking cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, different uh, last names are joking cousins, like Jara and Traore, mm -hmm. that is in Mali. You go in Senegal, you will find Job, which mm -hmm. will be the same thing like uh, the joking cousin, and then of Jara. Mm -hmm. And then we have those same last name where in the society when you were a joking cousin you were not supposed to fight mm -hmm. having blood mm -hmm. no bloodshed mm -hmm. and then that was something uh, that the society the people knew in the community but even today mm -hmm. in africa in west africa most of the country in mali for instance i'm jara if my joking cousin is traure um, i will never never ever intentionally kill him because I know that according to my ancestor mm -hmm. that was and that was forbidden mm -hmm. we cannot even uh, we will not even fight mm -hmm. whenever he does something which is not good I will tell truth to him mm -hmm. but I will never take him like an enemy mm -hmm. if you do that your personality if you it will be you will you will feel it in your life mm -hmm. uh, it will be a curse mm -hmm. for you and that is why the people in that time believed those kind of organization, mm -hmm. and that's help. And then um, also, um, what is uh, we we said that after the weaknesses, um, I will come back uh, then to this, which can help. And then um, we will probably talk about. I brought a kind of image. Mm -hmm to show um, that was a, a controversy in Mali. Most of the time, due to the uh, bad system of governance, uh, most of the time, if the, in the peop if the people do not agree, they go out. Mm -hmm. That was the same thing was happening in Senegal. Mm -hmm. And that's why, unfortunately, the brother, uh, uh, Jumefai, didn't come. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just wanted to see that people protest in West Africa whenever they do not agree. That's because right. the type of governance is not uh, uh, very good. Mm -hmm. and, and then um, I was uh, then uh, talking also about the presentation of West African uh, weaknesses. And then I said that the Eki um, Hills, uh, the Eki Hills Hill, the um, weakness mm -hmm. of today's system is a lack of ethical value. Mm -hmm. oh, that is a big problem. And then the, um, the African governance lack ethical leadership. Mm -hmm. And Afrocentric leader who, according to the former Tanzanian president, uh, Benjamin William Nkapa, have the capacity to safeguard peace, stability, decent livelihood, economic prosperity, while building strong institutions. And then if we have the Afrocentric leaders, that's going to help us. And the lesson from the old system to strengthen African governance. And presently, the political governance in West Africa is linked to only economic development, while in Kemet it was linked to math with the 42 laws, and then in the ancient Mali with the Kuru Kamfuka Charter, uh, with the 40 
uh, four uh, articles. Um, I try to bring the uh, picture of the site of the Kuru Kamfuka here, but unfortunately, this slide didn't accept to come. Otherwise, I wanted to show you uh, uh, the, the site of the Kuru, where the Kuru Kamfuka uh, charter happened in 1230. Five. The area is there, is still there in Mali. Mm -hmm. And then I was lucky to be the first teacher mm -hmm. of the teacher training college of the institution of, this, of the village. Mm -hmm. And then I spent a couple of years there. Wow. And then uh, I used to go on the site. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. it was uh, a, nice, a nice place that people used to go and visit uh, even now. Mm -hmm. And then democratic governments cannot be, uh, cannot lead to the um, expected improve growth and development outcome unless successful attempt of minimizing political disorder and instability can be achieved, uh, like the case of Senegal. And then uh, also, um, as I said, uh, in Botswana in South Africa is doing well by transforming the raw material. And the 12 king uh, from the different ethnic region in uh, Mandane Charter, Mandane uh, Empire elected Sunjata, uh, and that was an example of good governance right. and might be an appropriate mechanism for resolving ethnic conflict. Mm -hmm. and the Upper Egypt and the Lower Egypt were unified by Menes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, last time, uh, mm -hmm. uh, our colleague professor talked about that here. And Menes was known being. Uh, uh, the unified king who unified the upper Egypt and the lower and the lower one. That was a great example, great lesson for African mm -hmm. that we could uh, carry with us. We could uh, look through the real mirror or of the history in order to have our own uh, way uh, of development. Uh, the pathway to good governance and I try to choose Wangari Matai metaphor of good governance. And uh, Wangari uh, Muta Matai was mm -hmm. African first uh, Nobel uh, Prize laureate in 122004. And then uh, her vision of a just and stable society was inspired by a traditional African tool um, with three legs and a basin to sit on. And then the first leg uh, stands for democratic space mm -hmm. and where rights are respected, whether they are human rights, women's rights, children's rights, and environmental rights. And the second um, represents sustainable and equitable management of resources. And the third leg represent or stand for cultural and of peace that are deliberately cultivated within communities and nation. Uh, the basin or the seat represents society and its uh, prospect for development. When one leg is missing, it's like in African society, when I read that, I said that uh, when we are cooking in Africa, in the traditional Africa, we had free stones mm -hmm. that we put uh, uh, our pot on that. Oh, right. If you take out one stone, if you try to cook on two stone, uh, your pot's gonna get, uh, will never, it's, uh, yeah, it will pour. And then uh, when I saw that, I said that is a very good thing. When two legs are missing, it is impossible to keep any state alive. And when no legs are available, the state is good, is as good as a failed state. Mm -hmm. No development can take place in such a state either. Instead, conflict ensues. And that was, uh, he, she wrote that in 2006 um, and bold. And then uh, now, uh, for the conclusion, I said that the history of black Africa will remain suspended in mm -hmm. the air and cannot be written mm -hmm. properly until African historian dare to connect it with uh, the history of Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
Professor Sheikh Antajub tell us that in the origin of uh, the black uh, civilization, myth or reality. That is something clear. If we do not talk about our empire also, as what which the thing which happened to Egypt, the leader of those empire will be white one day right. when we will not be right. here. Right. That's gonna change them. Right. And then that is why it's good to talk about it. Self-reliance and unity allowed ancient kings to be respected. And today, Africans have to be proud of themselves mm -hmm. and look in the real view mirror to learn about their history. Mm -hmm. And then um, there is a poem titled Know Thyself. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the book of Anthony T. Browder, mm -hmm. I saw that he said, a person who knows and knows not that they know is asleep, awaken them. Mm -hmm. We have to awaken the African people. Mm -hmm. No renaissance is possible in Africa continues to, if Africa continues to ignore, ignore its indigenous knowledge and That's past right. heritage right. in the resolution That's of right. numerous challenges facing African people. Right. Africa has been dismem uh, dismembered from its past mm -hmm. and the majority of its oral sources are still unrecovered and unused. In this regard, Nguki Wachongo, in some time torn and new, an African Renaissance in, in 2009 warns, the success of Africans' Renaissance depends on the commitment and the ability of, to remember itself. Mm -hmm. Re remembering Africa is the only way to ensure Africans own full rebirth from the dark ages into which it was plunged mm -hmm. by the European Renaissance, mm -hmm. enlightenment, and modernity. Mm -hmm. And thank you to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, you don't mind to take questions? Yeah. Okay. All right. We, 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 we will give him another applause, please. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's so wonderful to hear this, brother. And, you know, um, one of the things that happens to us in the U.S. is that we, we sort of are stuck in an English-speaking country. And we, we, I mean, this brother speaks so many different languages. And it's just great to hear him speak in, in English. I mean, he could have given uh, this speech in French or uh, uh, Abamana, but he spoke to us in English, and we appreciate you so much. So at this time, if there are any questions, uh, please ask your question, and uh, we, we have a statement, yes. Yes, sir, brother, great presentation. Um, could you elaborate on how democracy has, uh, mess is messing up the society, particularly uh, the family uh, in Mali? Okay. okay. Um, uh, the democracy is messed up uh, in West Africa and in Mali uh, in general because uh, we can take first of all the case of Mali. For instance, in Mali, um, uh, the problem, the big problem in Mali in West Africa, the thing, first thing was corruption and then nepotism and then uh, all of those uh, bad things uh, happened, unfortunately, after independences, when the democracy happened. In 1990s, when we started with our democratic um, position with the, first, the president, Alpha Omar Konare, who became the first elected, democratically elected president, um, we assisted to different ill, like um, corruption, happen, the people uh, could be like the uh, chronism people could elect their friends to position where they cannot do, uh, where, that, where they cannot do the job. And that was a big problem. And then in the family, people were not um, 
we're, we're not willing to work. It, that it's bring that the younger generation uh, knew that if you make a, a friendship with a, a political person, you can just be his driver. You're gonna get your big car. You're going to get a big house. Mm -hmm. While a doctor in cardiology cannot mm -hmm. build his own house, mm -hmm. and that is the type of problem mm -hmm. uh, that we faced with democracy in our country. Mm -hmm. And that is why kids say to themselves that, oh, w why shall we kill ourselves to work hard, to double work, um, while others are not doing nothing and they are getting everything they want because they are with politicians, um, they are pushing them to lie, and then they come and lie to the community, and then people lie brought, uh, people in the community started to trust lie and truth. And that became the biggest problem of democracy. And that it was not the case in the past uh, with our ancestors, unfortunately. That's why currently the three countries, um, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, started uh, what we call the Liftako Gurma uh, relationship charter. The Liftako Gurma charter is a charter with 17 articles. That they are trying to learn from uh, the uh, Sunjata's uh, uh, charter and then Kurukamfuka charter, and then uh, they are helping each other about security now. That is why, when a coerce wanted to go and attack Niger, Mali and Burkina said, Come on, when you want to come to attack Niger, come, we will be there. We are one nation now. And then that's a kind of thinking that now, today, West, uh, in West Africa, we hope uh, this can be uh, a kind of thing which can help uh, uh, the community. It's because the uh, younger generation is starting to understand. You. All right, that's excellent explanation. And a wonderful lecture, brother. Um, just wondering, traditionally in, in Mali or perhaps West Africa, if two people had a dispute between each other, how was it handled? Thank you so much. Um, this is a very important question. Uh, I'm have, I will tackle this question in two ways. On the one way, I will tackle it with, on the one hand, I will tackle it with the traditional way. Mm -hmm. Because in our villages, where I am from, because I am originally from a village, in my village, when there is a dispute between two people, we go first to see the chief of the village. Yeah. He is the responsible. He knew the uh, village before us, and then now he is the one who knows the community, mm -hmm. and then he is the one who talked to us and say that talk about we we called both both of the people or both of the side, and the councils will come, and then you talk about what happened, and then they will tell you what is the truth. If it's a dispute about the land. They're going to call the elder, the elder people who is there in charge of land, mm -hmm. who knows before your father, mm -hmm. yeah. the land owns to who. And then he will say that they swore this place was the limit of this land mm -hmm. before your father was born. Mm -hmm. And that is the land that we gave to your grandfather. Mm -hmm. And then most of the time, the, the dispute will put an end, will take an end. Mm -hmm. and then people will understand, no problem. But in the big city, uh, currently we are trying now to uh, go beyond that. If there is a dispute about mm -hmm. land, because as we know in Africa, land was not to be sold before. It can, we borrowed land in the past. Mm -hmm. We didn't sell it. That was uh, what we happened. But nowadays we are selling. What the people do, I can, my, if this is the land of my dad and I have it, a rich person can come and build in it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, or if I talk, he will say that, let's go to the police station. Because they're in the police station, he's going to bribe. He will give money mm -hmm. uh, to them. And then they will tell you, no, you know, this guy, mm -hmm. even if the land is for you, this guy built on, uh, on the land. Mm -hmm. And then we cannot take it from him anymore. You have to accept whatever thing he will mm -hmm. give you, things like that. You see, that is the problem in the current, the, the, that is bribery is the, the key issue. Uh, that is the problem that we are facing in the community now. 
not a great, great lecture. Thank you. Of the, the old ways, the old um, customs that you have um, um, talked about are, are, are the set up for the basis for a democratic society in which that um, the elders um, give, um, give the guidance to the younger ones on how to conduct themselves, how to do this bit, do do the do the bit business, how to um, 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 act as act in the in the family um, uh, family center, the um, um, the king, kingship that that you have uh, that you um, uh, suggest is the basis for democracy, and how that you set it up so that things will be be done the right way. And that you that that um you will be guided by um the younger ones will be we will be given knowledge to um to set up to um be able to um take do to um take the um do the correct decisions for um uh, for to um to conduct themselves as far um family matters um um. Uh, Something like land or or, or or family disputes. You said the elders always have um, have a, a great say in that because they are knowledgeable about it, okay. and and you 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 have the basics for the let setting him, up the democracy. That's a big question. Let him answer. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a big question. All right. Nice. Um, <laughs> thank you so much indeed uh, for that. Um, first of all, I'm going to tell you that. Um, in the African, in West African society, the education is based on initiation mm -hmm. right. and not French right. education. Right. Where I was born, I went to the education in the bush. Right. Uh, my ankle brought me. I That's do right. remember mm -hmm. each raining season, mm -hmm. I had a step to go through. Mm -hmm. And then through those kind of thing, That's initiation right. system, right. and then we were taught what to do how to believe mm -hmm. and then with those elder mm -hmm. they taught us um, those mm -hmm. uh, traditional thing and that is the same thing that is that is why um, I was lucky to be to have an American African American lady here who did her full uh, corpus in my in my village mm -hmm. she knows that even now a day you can find real African people in, our, in my village. When she went, they tell her that this is the village of the hunter, the dozo. Right. You have to speak the local language. And that's why she can speak it well, because in the community of the people, even now, mm -hmm. oh, of course, we have the modernization is coming, but still now our elders do think about their ancestor. Right. And then uh, they are still acting uh, trying to educate, to give you what you want. Those who want, even if you go to school during the, uh, that was my case, during the holidays when I arrived back home in the village, they said, okay, no problem. Uh, whatever we did before, uh, uh, when you were absent, uh, then now they bring me and they tell me, they teach me what I have to know about the community, about the tradition. And through that, we learn with those elders and they can transfer the knowledge easily. Thank you, sir. You're most welcome. Thank you, Brother Diara. Uh, great welcome. lecture, and I uh, appreciate the answer so far. Um, so my question is kind of related to the, um, uh, one of the brothers before that asked a question about um, disputes, but mine's more about, um, I'm curious about if there's like indigenous accountability uh, measures or preventative measures that would be able to be used to fight corruption today um, that we see in like the democratic system that's kind of it's been imported to uh, African societies. All right. Um, it, if I got well, your question is like, uh, is that was a contribution or? Oh, sorry. I, meant, um, like what's <coughs> I didn't catch you very well. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Um, Okay. Um, 
in, in the indigenous world in West Africa, mainly in Mali, Burkina, Senegal, for instance, in Mali, let's take the case of Mali, you know, we faced rebellion and terrorism uh, recently. Mm -hmm. And then what the foreigner, what the foreigner tried to do was to oppose two ethnic groups, the Dokoso, what we call the Dogon people, mm -hmm. yeah. and the Fulani people. Mm -hmm. What they did was like um, some wear a cloth uh, of the Dogono people, mm -hmm. and then they were speaking English. Mm -hmm. They came and attacked a Fulani village. Mm -hmm. Those Fulani said that those people have the Dokono clothes, mm -hmm. but they are speaking another language. We know the Dogono language. That was not the Dogono language. <laughs> Those who escaped said that, yeah. no, that was not. Mm -hmm. and, and then, because also there is the, what I called in the indigenous values, the Sanangkuya, the joking relationship mm -hmm. between ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. There are a certain ethnic group in the indigenous uh, part in my country that we call uh, the Bozo and the Dogono. Mm -hmm. They cannot even get married each other. Mm -hmm. Because when you get married to the women, she's supposed to give birth and that will bring the blood. You cannot be the cause of hurting her. Mm -hmm. That is why even getting, they cannot get married, they cannot kill each other. Mm -hmm. That is not even a joking today. Mm -hmm. We do not even joke it in my country with that. Those people, even if they are in America, mm -hmm. when they met, if there are those different, mm -hmm. the Bozo um, and the uh, Dogono, they will tell you, when, even if they met, they don't know, they will have sign, they will have, things will prevent them to get married each other. And those kind of indigenous values still now try to push people. Now, even they, that makes, uh, things better in the for the indigenous, but for the democratic, for the most people who went to school, for most of the people who went to school, we, we've, when we bring the democracy, we didn't work with those value. Mm -hmm. We work on the um, corruption mm -hmm. or on bribery. You when the you wanna uh, have a land, you can attack the other people part, and you can just get it and go to the court. When you go to the court. You, when you have the money, that is the problem. When you have the money, you will win it, when, even if the land uh, does not belong to you. That is the key problem for democracy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Um, Kwame Nkrumah um, described in graphic detail the exact complex nature of something called neo-colonial colonialism. Uh, is there an African nation that is not a neo-colony? And then there's also the issue, right quick, there's also the issue of people like the, um, the Arabs and the, and the East Indians and what have you that own all the stores and, and then even though the, the, the nation is black and then you got the Africans out in the street vending and not owning and in the stores and what else. So I'm saying all that to say this. Is there an African nation, a black African nation, that is not a neo-colony? And how should we accurately conceptualize this and strategize um, what to do? Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much indeed for this question. It's a big question. But when you asked the question, the first indigenous knowledge, uh, ethnic group which comes into my mind uh, is the Dogon people from Bajankara. They are living on the top of the hill, even there now. Uh, people used to go and see them. Most of the time, they try to carry the value. And then we used to say, maybe if you see, even today, the neocolonialism um, is something which started in Africa with the coming, the arrival of the Christianity and Islam. And then um, that was really far because Islam even came first. Uh, uh, some books will go far uh, as to the fourth century 
and then in the uh, beginning of the Ghana. And saying that, um, that's why those religion did hurt us at the time. And when the Christianity also came, it was the same thing. And, but some of the elders still now try to resist. They are not numerous, mm -hmm. but some till now, there are no numbers, but we have small mm -hmm. ethnic groups mm -hmm. which try to keep to move on with their ancestral value, try to go with the same thing, the way, the truth way that their ancestors told them. Among them, I can call the Dogon people in Mali. One, yeah. Two, yeah. Okay. Two Thank you. I, and two congratulations again, my brother. I, I appreciate you. And I got two quick questions. You mentioned it, you implied it earlier, the relationship between Mali, Chad, and Niger in terms of the old Mali, empire. Burkin, Mali, Burkina, and Niger. Yes, uh, but, yes and in Thank terms you. of the old empire, I mean, this, Mali is not today what it was in its heyday. So we could talk about that landmass and those people coming. The second thing is that I was waiting for you to talk about the great learning center that existed in Mali that educated many, many people in its day in, in Timbuktu, and some of those manuscripts are still being collected now, as of today, foundations are doing. So just talk a little bit about the great university there uh, that taught many people in West Africa, okay? All right, thank you. Uh, thank you so much indeed. Um, in Timbuktu, as you said, that's right. Uh, I'm currently working an article about uh, the former um, document which were found in Timbuktu based on medicines. Because we found in Timbuktu that uh, we had doctors who tried to heal patients, not only the wood, but with the psychological impact, try to help you uh, what to do uh, with, uh, the tr during the treatment. For instance, the colonat was used when they were treating an elder and old people. The colonat was very useful for them and uh, can mean a lot of things in African society. And then I learned from those manuscripts that we uh, worked a lot in uh, their people, the African people worked a lot since the Songhai Empire, mm -hmm. because the Songhai Empire was started by Sony Aliber, that we call Ali the biggest. Mm -hmm. And after him, the dynasty of Ali came the dynasty of uh, Askia Mohammed. And that time Timbuktu was a center of uh, knowledge. Most of the people leave uh, the uh, Morocco, they cross the desert and they came in Timbuktu. And that is why even I wanna catch your attention about it. Uh, Kanku Musa during his trip to Mecca yeah. where um, he brought a lot of gold with him. When he was coming back, he came also with some uh, intellectual from Mecca, mm -hmm. but when they arrived, they told him that those guys that you have here, they are much more better than us. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And that was something that yes. African were proud of that yes. time. Yes. And then that's why those manuscripts were destroyed, mm -hmm. unfortunately, mm -hmm. during yeah. the rebellion in Mali. Yes. And then that's why we are trying to reconstruct those things. Uh, uh, different NGOs try to care with them. Now they are digitalizing them. Yeah. And then uh, thanks to that, uh, that's gonna be very useful. And Timbuktu was a really big center for knowledge Africa. for Africa. Africa. And uh, that was known for uh, centuries. And that's a very good thing that uh, African people can get inspiration from that and learn because the Arabic, most of them, some are not translated yet. There are people are working on that. I even get in touch with uh, a colleague who is, uh, whose major is Arab and then uh, he is he's among the group who are translating those uh, manuscripts. And I hope uh, after that we can work better with them and that can be great for Africa. Sister, Thank you. Sister. 
Oh, hi. Here. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, uh, Professor Jara. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was phenomenal. Um, I have a question about the the governance system, uh, system, particularly as you described uh, the alliance between Niger, Burkina, and Mali, and the pressure from ECOWAS, right? And I would like to um, understand uh, your your perspective. Do you think that that alliance can overcome the <laughs> external pressure outside of that traditional governance system that's still present today within the alliance from ECOWAS because we know that um, I believe the president of ECOWAS is from Nigeria, correct? Yeah. Which is also a bordering country to Niger. So I, I'm not even going to touch on the pressures from the Western powers, but just within West Africa, could you tell us, um, just in your opinion, do you think that alliance can sustain the pressures from, uh, from ECOWAS? Thank you. Thank you so much indeed for your question. Um, this is a profound question. It's very important uh, because currently in West Africa, uh, those three countries, Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, and Niger, uh, they um, get out from the block, from ECOWAS. Uh, they announce, it's an announcement. Um, I follow news last time. I saw the president of Togo, who is the mediator uh, between ECOWAS and those countries. And then he thinks that it's quite it's still possible that maybe they will convince those three countries not to go. Because if they go, it can bring different things. But the problem is that, that is from my perspective. Uh, those three countries, they realize that they, we have hands behind the curtain, mm -hmm. which are pushing other mm -hmm. leaders right. of ECOWAS right. to act against those three countries. Mm -hmm. And then we African cannot continue with the same thing again and again. Mm -hmm. That is not possible. And then thanks to the action of those three countries, I hope the African's mind will be unshackled. unshackled. Mm -hmm. And then we will be free. Mm -hmm. um, that can help. Because my, I am so happy that those three countries took that decision because even the other countries from ECOWAS didn't believe that those countries will dare to act like that. In the life, Africans, it's time for us that we have to know that we got, the people got us afraid. Since the slave, the enslavement, when we became free, they tell us if you go to the big cities, we have uh, problems, you will not be in good hands. Uh, when we got independence, we wanted to get together. Uh, 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 the, as he talked about Kwame Kruma mm -hmm. and uh, the former president of Guinea, most of those people wanted since that time the United Africa. Since they, but they get us afraid, don't get uh, together, don't go to Kwame Kruma. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when the, pr the former president of Libya, Mohamed Gaddafi, wanted to unite right. Africa again, we, right. sell, we know what uh, um, uh, what happened to him. Right. And then uh, that's why nowadays, if those three countries can together, um, uh, go together, if ECOWAS uh, does not change the behavior, other countries are going maybe to join them. And that is uh, uh, why even I am don't know, but I will be happy that if the brother Jumi Fai from Senegal could be here, mm -hmm. because um, if other countries like Senegal, if there is a young president there, maybe uh, they would like probably to join uh, wow. the union. And yeah. that can be an example for African, and the rest can do the same thing, and we can have a, a big African united. And one question online. We have two questions online. Uh, yeah, participants are, are from the Horn of Africa. 
and we have some participants from Harry. Uh, one is Mutu Baldwin, and he says, thanks for this great lecture. My question is, would you say that there are at least one Afrocentric leader or more in Africa today? All right. Um, <laughs> today, um, I can say that we are starting to have Afrocentric <laughs> leaders. <laughs> Because the uh, younger generation, right. uh, when we take uh, the example of Mali, of uh, Burkina, they are still young, right. but they have the behavior of an Afrocentric leader. Right. They are trying to act uh, for the interests of the blacks, of the community, and trying, because being a good leader is to um, start respect mm -hmm. by themselves. Uh, and then uh, they are subject, they are starting, they want to be subject, and we hope it will continue. And I'm uh, sure that they are showing the example that we are having now, currently, uh, Afrocentric leader. It's uh, coming. Good right. example, Arden. Thank you. you Thank let's give him a big Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, boy, I tell you, I, when, when I come here, you're talking about learning. This is a learning institution. We're just so very happy to have all of you and have you, brother, you can just see, you can see to, all, to have this wonderful brother here who has come from uh, Mali, and he's come out of a strong tradition, and he has given us a very, very powerful lecture. Uh, you can subscribe. If you are not subscribed, uh, to the Malefic Hete Asante uh, Institute uh, series. You can, you can do that. Uh, you can go online and subscribe to the series. Um, we also have a website. And from our website, if you want to make a donation to the uh, MKA Institute, you can make a donation to the MKA Institute. We're also happy to have um, uh, from... Uh, uh, the Fulbright, Sister Niera, is it? Me? Yeah. Nadira. 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 Sister Nadira. Nadira. Sister Nadira. Nadira. Sister Nadira. Nadira. Yeah, Sister Nadira, who's been to Mali and so on. Uh, that's right. So that's a wonderful thing. So um, I think that's it. I think that I have covered everything. If there's something that I've missed, I'm sure you will let me know. But uh, I, we really want to give our appreciation to Brother Kareem uh, for being here. It makes a difference uh, for <laughs> <laughs> since uh, the last time. So remember, uh, we got Dr. Zizwe Po on uh, March the 3rd, and we look forward to seeing all of you here. He's an outstanding political thinker. He came out of, he came up with Kwame Nkrumah, uh, not Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Kwame Toure, came up with Kwame Toure, and the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Uh, he is. Um, he was. Um, he was a friend to many of the people who were activists. He himself uh, was an activist, uh, and uh, in the early days. Uh, but he's a brilliant political thinker on a world level, and he's going to give a global talk about African issues. And I just want to say, look forward to you. And I want to again. Uh, give a shout out to our our board members, Brother Carlton, uh, Brother uh, uh, Stanley, and uh, I may have missed somebody. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, um, all the all the board members, uh, and and also want to uh, mention uh, Brother. Uh, we uh, we we have um, we have a whole list of stuff, but we're not gonna we're not gonna bore you with all the stuff that we have to tell you about. But if you don't have the Mashariki Gazetti, you need to get the, uh, the uh, uh, Mashariki Gazetti. Uh, this, this publication, Doctor, how long have we been publishing? How long have you been publishing this? 20 years. 20 years. There's a lot of good stuff in here. And if you're not subscribed to it, you should. And if you have children or grandchildren, uh, they should all be going to Lotus Academy. That's the other thing I want to tell you. All right? So we call upon our ancestors. 
far and near, the mother of our mothers, the father of our fathers, to render mercy and to bear witness for the liberation and the victory of all oppressed people forever. It is done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.